Late Thursday night, the New York Times dropped what seemed to be a bombshell that two government inspectors general had reached out to the Justice Department and made a criminal referral against Hillary Clinton regarding her use of a private email account while she was Secretary of State. Now, this story stunned me because you know, I have been pretty much on the forefront of saying that the entire email gate story, and I hate to even call it email gate, is largely just bogus. Um, but here I was, I was faced with the fact that now there was a criminal investigation possibly going to happen against Hillary Clinton. But by morning, the story had changed. No longer was it a criminal investigation of Hillary Clinton. Now it was a criminal investigation relating to the handling of emails and classified emails by the State Department. But there was nowhere in the Times story where it gave any indication of what the crime might have been. And the handling of the classified information line just didn't make a lot of sense to me. Well, this article quoted some documents, uh, documents from the inspectors general, and these were public documents, so I got a hold of them. And as I read them through, I began to think, well, wait a minute, I must have the wrong documents, because there is absolutely no way that the New York Times could possibly have taken what I'm reading and translated it into what they're saying. As the day went on, I learned that, in fact, these were the documents the Times was citing, that I had the exact same things they were looking at, and they had simply misrepresented them. The essence of the Times story, once you get past this criminal referral nonsense, by the way, footnote, the inspectors general came out on Friday afternoon saying there was no criminal referral. But the essence of the Times story uh, was that there was a criminal referral and then it started talking about how these memos said there were lots of classified documents in uh, Hillary Clinton's email accounts and yet Hillary Clinton had said in the past that she didn't have classified documents and you know the, the more I read it the more I was saying well what what exactly is it that you're trying to say and the end point is they were trying to make a whole lot of implications with nothing there. Um, the memos that the Times cited, these are the memos. They're from the Office of the Inspector General for the State Department and for um, the intelligence agencies. And what these are talking about has nothing to do with what the Times is implying. What these are talking about is the system being used now by the Freedom of Information Act specialists for the State Department and for the intelligence agencies to determine what documents can be released under Freedom of Information Act requests out of Hillary Clinton's emails. That's it. It is about a review that is taking place many, many months after she left the State Department by people who are having an argument about whether or not they should be these documents or particular elements of these documents should be retroactively classified. Now the Times in particular cites this document, a June 29, 2015 memorandum which is sent by both Steve Linick, the Inspector General for the State Department, and Charles McCullough, the Inspector General for the Intelligence Community. And what they quote is a clause in a sentence saying that in Hillary Clinton's collection there are hundreds of potentially classified emails. Now let's read the two sentences. On June 26th and June 27th, 2015, department staff responsible for FOIA issues further reviewed a portion of the 55,000 pages that have been or are to be reviewed. They report discovering hundreds of potentially classified emails within the collection. In addition, there is concern that possible classified material will be posted in tomorrow's release. Then at the end, the document says, the department should ensure that no classified documents are publicly released. This is not about Hillary Clinton. This is not about her doing anything wrong. This is about a dispute as to whether documents that are about to be publicly released, emails of Hillary Clinton, 
that about are about to be publicly released should be designated as classified. We're talking about a story, an explosive scandal that is about proper bureaucratic processes involving a department looking through emails of someone who doesn't work there anymore. And what makes it all the worse is, you know, when you read the Times story, it never says these memos are about classification review for Freedom of Information Act requests. That's boring. It's boring, you know, just by saying the words, I almost feel like falling asleep. It's not a page one story. It's not a blockbuster. And guess what? That's what the story was about. It's not a blockbuster. But then paragraph after paragraph of this story end up being either completely false or completely misleading. Then the Times says something that is clearly intended to make an implication. And the implication is unsupported, and worse, the statements it makes are false. They suggest, this report suggests, that Hillary Clinton had this private email system, which she did, just like every Secretary of State that preceded her that had email. Uh, and she had this private email system, which helped her shield it from uh, congressional investigators and FOIA requests. Ah, uh, that is about as wrong an interpretation of the law as exists. Under the FOIA law and under the regulations put out by the Department of Justice, they're publicly available, you can find them, they're also publicly available on the State Department's website, a document that is in control of the department is subject to FOIA. The Secretary of State is part of the department. Legally, she is an agent of the department. So if Hillary Clinton has an official document on her personal stationery sitting on her desk at home, and it is somehow relevant to a congressional investigation or to a, um, a FOIA request, it has to be produced. Now, it is true that the documents have to be in the possession of the department uh, at the time the request is submitted. And here is where the Times goes completely off the rails. Um, Hillary Clinton's emails went through an automatic backup system. In other words, the official emails remained under the control of the department in a secure storage device. So the statement that Hillary Clinton, by using this private email system, was somehow shielding secrets from discovery is a flat-out lie. But then we get to the part where I, I'm really sad to say I believe is the proof that this was an intentional deception. I, I really don't know how else to put it. Let me read you what the Times says. These are two paragraphs. The inspectors general also criticized the State Department for, remember these words, its handling of sensitive information, particularly in its reliance on retired senior foreign service officers to decide if information should be classified and for not consulting with the intelligence agencies about its determinations. That's true. That's exactly what the inspectors general said. In March, Mrs. Clinton insisted that she was careful in her handling of information. There's the same word on her private account. So you've got one paragraph that says the inspectors general were concerned about essentially reckless handling of the information. And then the next paragraph saying Hillary Clinton insisted she, that she handled the information appropriately. So anyone reading this, I know I did, thought would think that the inspectors general were saying that Hillary Clinton handled the information inappropriately. But the two paragraphs were about two different things. 
The first one was about the handling by the FOIA staff in response to requests for information that were submitted after Hillary Clinton left as Secretary of State. The second paragraph, which used the same words, was about how Hillary Clinton, when she was Secretary of State, managed her emails. This is in journalism a little game that some people play, where they jam two facts together and use true facts, but make reality seem completely different. If I were to tell you that Tom shot Harry and Harry died, and had that in my story, you would think, reasonably, that Tom shot Harry and killed him. But then if I extended it and said, Tom shot Harry when they were on a hunting trip in 1962, and Harry died 30 years later of coronary heart disease. The two facts had nothing to do with each other. I took true facts in the first jam them together sentence and gave you a false implication of what the truth was. That is exactly what the New York Times did here. Journalism is supposed to be about informing a democracy. By that, what I mean is our job is to let readers and the rest know what is going on, the facts as we can best determine them, and then, having provided that information, step back and let voters make their decisions. It is not about getting our names on the front page. It is not about having the latest scoop that people are talking about in all the Washington salons. And when you get to the point where your stories are fundamentally false, I'm going to be very blunt. Somebody needs to be fired.